Let's talk a bit more about uh, Ethernet. Uh, so some of this will be a rehash, some of this will be new. So Ethernet is the most common technology used on LANs. Uh, so pretty much everybody's using Ethernet now. Uh, remember, I talked about there being others out there in, in the past and history, but everyone's pretty much switched over to Ethernet at this point. Uh, it operates on layer 2. So it's a data link layer technology. Supports a whole bunch of speeds. We've listed off a bunch of them already. We have 10, 100, we have 1 gigabit. Uh, we even have uh, 10 gigabit. Whoops. Here's 40 gigabit even. And there's even work on uh, 100 gigabit. So there's a whole bunch of different speeds that you can do uh, Ethernet on. There's two sublayers. There's LLC and Mac. LLC handles uh, communication between the upper and lower layers. And it, uh, it also takes an IP packet and adds control information, and it's implemented in software. So you can kind of, when we start, when we talk about this, these are kind of the division between software and hardware. So this is software. And the Mac is done in hardware. The Mac is, we've already mentioned, 802.3. So it does data encapsulation. It does frame delimiting. Uh, in the beginning, so it'll say, hey, a frame is coming. Uh, addressing with Mac, so it's our addressing is done here. Remember we talked about the 48-bit uh, Mac address. That is burned into the network interface of uh, every card out there. And the first half, the 24 bits starting, is your OID of the manufacturer. And then you have 24 bits which is your device ID, uh, which is randomly generated for your interface. Uh, so then those must be unique. Uh, usually it's formatted with dashes, colons, or decimals of some kind. So if we noticed on uh, Windows here, it provides us one way. Take a look at my Mac. See how it shows it in dashes mode? Uh, often if you look online for people describing MAC addresses, it'll be done with colons in between every two. Uh, and sometimes it will be done with uh, dots. So you'll have uh, like a dotted decimal notation type look uh, of like an IP address type thing. But it's for MAC and Cisco likes to do that. So uh, some of the different methods are well, like dashes. You'll have colons in between or you'll have just a dot. And with the dot, uh, usually it's like every um, with with the with the dots, it's done every um, every like four, I think it is every four characters. Uh, whereas with the dashes and the colons, it's like every two. So it'd be like zero A, zero B, zero C something. This would be zero A, zero B, zero C. And then this would be like 0a, 0b, dot, 0c, 0d type look. The Ethernet we use today uh, is known as DIX, Dix Ethernet. Uh, so this became the standard that we now use called Ethernet 2. which is now just referred to as Ethernet. So that's where it came from. There were actually several different types of Ethernet uh, originally, and this is the one that won. The maximum frame size of the Ethernet that we use is 1518 bytes. So that's the largest payload you can send across in a frame. Uh, the smallest size is 64. If it's less than 64, then that's either a f collision fragment 
or uh, a runt frame and is discarded. So for some reason if it's smaller than 64 it gets tossed. Let's see if I can make a trash can. <laughs> it gets tossed. Uh, if it's larger than that it may get either split or tossed as well unless you're using an additional specification such as 802.3 AC allows for an extended maximum size which allows up to 1522 bytes which is just enough to allow VLANs so once we start talking about that you need to be using 8023 AC to allow for a slightly larger frame so we can shove the VLAN information in there. Now I mentioned with uh, IPv4 we they stuffed additional stuff things into the header. Same with Ethernet, we've stuffed additional things into the header because over the years we've realized we've needed different technologies to be added. So this is one way that they've uh, they've done that with Ethernet. We've created additional standards that that um, products have to adhere to. Uh, that then allow for this larger size. So we'll get into VLANs coming up. Uh, and basically VLANs are virtual local networks. So you can make you can make networks within networks that are overlaid on top of each other kind of. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Some of the fields in Ethernet. Uh, let's blank out so we have some room for this. some of this too. Some of the some of the fields in the frame. We have a preamble. There's a start frame. Delimiter. Uh, there's a destination. Mac. There's the source Mac. There's the length, and you've seen some of this when I've shown the when I've shown the uh, Wireshark captures. You, you've seen some of these come up already. Uh, the actual data payload itself, and then there's a frame check sequence at the end, which is that meat grinder that I mentioned, where it hashes it and comes up with some sort of value. So the preamble and the start frame basically say, "Hey, a frame is coming," and then there's like a rep repetition of uh, bits that says there's a frame coming, there's a frame coming, there's a frame coming, there's a frame coming. Oh, here it is. Here's some information. And then we'll get the destination and source MAC address. It'll say here's how long it's supposed to be. We'll check the data. And then it will check the frame check sequence against the length and make sure everything is uh, correct. And we'll do our own calculation of frame check and do a comparison. So that's some of the fields that are available in there. And you can take a look at that in Wireshark again. Uh, and you know see those. It uses a hexadecimal system so Ethernet uses hex as you've noticed with the uh, 0 through 9 ABCD type uh, notation Go check this out you've got letters and numbers mixed in there it's a hexadecimal notation so it's base 16. So each each uh, bit there has 16 op options. It could be uh, 0 through 9, A to F. Uh, Cisco uses, as I mentioned, uh, a different way of displaying these uh, with the four digits. So there's if you looked at it, this on a router, it would say or switch, it would say 0025.22fb.461. Just be aware that there's different ways of notating this. There's that dash colon and dot methodology. Uh, it's used on layer 2, so remember we're on layer 2 here. Uh, so that is possible on switches as well as routers, as well as every device basically. Uh, there's a, you can do unicast or multicast or broadcast. This is sounding familiar, doesn't it? Just like in layer 3 with IP, we have layer 2 for all three of these. You can do one source to destination MAC address so you could send a frame directly to one other device which is m usually what happens there's multicast uh, where you could send a frame 
uh, to a specific address, which is 0, 01 0, 0, 5 e If it starts with that, it's a multicast address. So if a device is listening for multicast traffic on layer 2, not layer 3, but layer 2, it would be listening on that uh, the beginning of that for its Mac. Uh, there's also a broadcast, which is all F, and so on. If it's all Fs, then that's a broadcast on layer 2. So if you send out a frame, all Fs, everyone's going to get it. And actually, let's take a look at that. If we open up trusty old Wireshark again, I encourage you to spend a lot of time staring at Wireshark. <laughs> let's open up a browser. Let's see if I can get, there we go, we got an ARP. Excellent. Let's go find that guy. There's all sorts of data here. <laughs> all right, see that right there? Destination broadcast, all Fs. So when we start talking about ARP coming up here, that's, that's, that's what it does. It, we send out a broadcast to everybody on our segment on layer two to find out how to get to that device. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about ARP in the next video. But that's a broadcast right there. It's a good example of one.